Pelvic girdle consists of the right and left hip bones. Each hip bone is made up of the ilium, ischium, or ischium, which is the bone where you're sitting down, and the pubis, which is the most anterior part of the hip. Hey guys, welcome, I'm Dr. Gonzalez, and today in this video we are going to talk about the following topics. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share because in this way you will never miss a video every single week when I post a new lecture. All right, let's get started. The pelvic girdle or hip is made up of two hip bones, also known as the os coxa or coxal bones, that articulate with the sacrum posteriorly. So this is the sacrum right here. Each hip bone is actually made up of three individual bones. We have the ilium, which is this bone right here. We have the ischium or ischium, which is this bone right here. It's actually the bone where, where you're sitting down. And the pubis or pubic bone, which is the most anterior one right here. The two bones articulate anteriorly at the pubic bones in an area we call the pubic symphysis. This is a disc of fibrocartilage between the two bones, right? And in total, the three individual bones will fuse into one hip bone by the age of 23. The head of the femur or thigh bone articulates with the acetabulum of the hip bone as a ball and socket joint. So this is how it looks like. This is an example of the head of the femur right here. And this is the acetabulum right here. The acetabulum is composed of parts of all three bones that make up the hip bone. So the most superior one is the iliac crest, which is that crest over there. And if actually, if you stand up and you put your hands like a Superman, you can actually palpate your own iliac crest. Then anteriorly, there is the anterior inferior iliac spine, which is that one labeled in light blue. There's also an anterior superior iliac spine, which is that one in light blue. And let's take a look at them anteriorly. So anterior superior iliac spine and anterior inferior iliac spine. And posteriorly, there are two iliac spines. There is the posterior inferior iliac spine in light blue. And there is a posterior superior iliac spine in light blue. So let's take a look at them posteriorly, right? The posterior superior iliac spine and the posterior inferior iliac spine. Also, there is an auricular surface in light blue and there's a greater sciatic notch in light blue which is posteriorly ischium there is a lesser sciatic notch remember that the greater sciatic notch is over the ilium there is a ischial tuberosity which actually when you sit down you sit on this ischial tuberosity and the ischial or ischial spine in light blue. There's also a lunate surface of the acetabulum, right, forming that area for articulation with the femur. And there is a pubic arch in light blue. Lastly, uh, these bones will form a foramen called the obturator foramen. And so here there's also an ischial surface of the obturator foramen. In light blue. Lastly on the pubis there is a pubic arch in light blue, a pubic crest, and a pubic tubercle. There's also an obturator crest and an obturator foramen part which is called the pubis surface and you can see it there as light blue. So the male and female pelvis differ in several ways. For example, the bones of the male pelvis are usually larger and heavier, 
and the difference in female pelvis are mainly associated with the requirements for pregnancy and childbirth. The female pelvis, for example, is wider and shallower than that of a male. And also the female pelvis has a pubic arch greater than 90 degrees, like in this example that I'm showing you. Now in males, you can observe how now there is a pubic arch of less than 90 degrees and is also heavier and thicker, also very deep and narrow in comparison to females. So let me show you them side by side. You can observe major differences, especially on that pubic arch. Now the lower limbs include the bones of the thigh and leg and the ankle and foot. The femur or thigh bone, which is this bone right here, it's the longest, heaviest and strongest bone in the human body. Its proximal end or head inserts into the acetabulum, like I said before, of the hip bone. And the distal end articulates with the tibia or shin bone at the knee joint, like this. This is the tibia right here. And articulates with the patella or kneecap, which is this bone right here, like this. The femur has a head, and the heads, remember, they always have a neck. So head and neck in light blue. There's also a greater trochanter, and if there's a greater trochanter, there should be a lesser trochanter, which you can see right here in light blue. Now, there's also on the most distal part of the bone, a lateral condyle. And if there's a lateral condyle, there should be a medial condyle in light blue. There is also a lateral epicondyle, very similar like in the humerus. And there is also a medial epicondyle. A way or the best way to actually determine which side is lateral and which side is medial, I always tell my students to take a look at the head because the head, it's always medial. So if the head is medial, it means that this would be the medial epicondyle in light blue. And therefore, on the contrary, this side should be the lateral side. Now there's also here a gluteal tuberosity posteriorly in light blue and a linea aspera. Patella or kneecap, which is this bone that I'm holding right here, it's a triangular bone, also known as a sesamoid bone, that develops into the quadriceps tendon. And this bone articulates on its posterior surface, which is this surface right here, with the femur, like this. Now the lower leg consists of the tibia or shin bone and the fibula. The tibia's proximal end articulates with the femur and its distal end articulates with the talus bone of the ankle, which is this bone right here like this. Tibia has a medial condyle and also a lateral condyle. There is also a tibial tuberosity anteriorly, an anterior border, and a medial malleolus. Now in the fibula, if you notice, the fibula has two major landmarks or um, also known as the head, most superiorly, and the lateral malleolus inferiorly. Lastly, we have the ankle and foot bones. In here, you can observe most posteriorly this bone called the calcaneus, which is your heel, this bone, which is the talus, and then we have the navicular, and from medial, we have this medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, and lateral cuneiform, and lastly, the cuboid, forming the ankle. In the foot, we have these metatarsals. Remember, the first one is gonna be the one closest to your big toe, which is this one, metatarsal one, two, three, four, and five, or fifth. 
and then there is the phalanges there are proximal phalanges middle phalanges in these four toes and distal phalanges in, fi in all five toes and if you want to know more about the skeletal system or any other system you can check out my youtube channel queen mary anatomy i have tons of videos on other systems so go check them out um, and don't forget to subscribe like and share and if you have any comments or suggestions feel free to leave them on the comment section below all right thank you for watching i'll see you next time